Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. We're here today to visit a really good friend of mine at the Soul of an Auto Brewery. Those of you who like craft beer, you're going to love this tour. Why don't we just get started? Hey, welcome back to the channel. I promised you all a wonderful interview today and you're going to get it. I'm here with my friend Yvonne at Soldo Venado Brewery. Yvonne, thank you for having us today. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for having me on your channel. Well, we're glad you're here. Our viewers are people from all over the world and so some of them have a lot of interest in craft beer and some of them I think have an interest just in all things Ecuador. So uh, this would be a great place to do it. Good. Let me ask you something. Where were you born? Well, I was uh, born here in uh, the Valley of Longevity here in Vilcabamba. My parents moved here uh, over 45 years ago, and uh, they purchased a large piece of property, put it under, under conservation, and that's where we get our water for, from to make our beer. It's uh, water that is potable from the source. All the way from your property? Yes, yes. And that's fantastic. So, um, Curtis, how long has the brewery been here? I'm, I'm sorry, Yvonne, how oh, long Curtis, my dad, yes. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, the brewery has been here, uh, well, when my dad built this house, he had a little small area over in this, you'll see it, I'll show you uh, once we get a, a tour of the brewery. Uh, he built it with uh, the idea to produce uh, beer, liquor, wine, chips, and jams. And he got the permits uh, in 1990. To, uh, from the Ministry of Commerce here in Ecuador uh, to, to produce those five things. And uh, in 2012, uh, we decided to take it to an, a next step uh, we, into a 500 uh, liter um, production. And then um, last year, we took another step to uh, make the brewery the way it looks today. So, and then we have another step, which is turn the rest of the house into a steakhouse, beer garden type of thing. So that will be coming in, I don't know, sometime in the future. <laughs> hey, we always say, algún right? día, someday. Someday, someday. Yes. Fantastic. Well, tell us about what kind of products you do produce here in the brewery. Well, uh, we produce six different styles of beer. We produce a, a lager, a blonde, a red lager, a dark beer, a IPA, and a special beer. Our, our special beer uh, usually will have coffee because we're in a coffee growing region, or it'll have cacao because we're you know, an hour away from the birthplace, birthplace of cacao for the world, which is in the province of Zamora Chinchipe. So that's a place that uh, is a great place to visit is uh, the, uh, like, whatever, uh, there's like, ruins and stuff where they found the oldest cacao seed inside a clay jar. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah. out, that, that's, that's out here in Palanda. In Palanda, yeah, I've been to yeah. Palanda a couple yeah. times. Yeah. So. so, but I understand you have a new exciting beer coming out. Tell us about that. Well, it's a cannabis beer. Um, we've uh, been working on, on developing a good recipe uh, in 20, 21 Ecuador legalized cannabis. So if you go to Supermaxi or you go to any of the large uh, pharmacies, you can find, find CBD oil, and et cetera, et cetera. So we, we want to be part of that market and we're producing, uh, our, our recipe is really good. It's based on our IPA and the type of cannabis we use, it has the passion fruit flavors. So oh, it's, wow. it works out really well. That and we'll ha we have another product coming up too, which is a CBD Wayusa energy drink. Oh, wow. And we also have our tonic water, which is made from locally sourced quinine bark. Uh, and uh, a little history with quinine here, um, or tonic water. Uh, in like 1630s, uh, there was a uh, Spanish monk traveling through here and he got sick with malaria. They gave him the quinine bark, cured him, and uh, the Spanish crown, when they found out that there's this miracle bark, uh, they create a royal sanctuary for quinine. So anyone found with 
quinine outside of the uh, royal sanctuary without permits was punished by death. And then the... Serious about it. Yes. And then they formed the first royal pharmacy. So prior to the discovery of quinine, there was no pharmacies. There's no control over a pharmaceutical. And if you take into consideration how many lives quinine has saved, it's more than all the other pharmaceuticals combined. It's, it's a, a uh, what, what quinine does, it, it creates a, a small fever to boost your immune system. So there's like six or seven different, um, what are they called? The, uh, the alkaloids. Alkaloids, yes. There's six or seven different alkaloids that help boost your immune system. And, and we make it all natural, it's sweetened with honey. Uh, there's, there's no chemicals in it, so it's good. We, we try to keep things as, as pure as we can. I remember at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, uh, Yvonne's dad, Curtis, came and actually delivered a case of the quinine water to us. And it's called what again? Tony? Tony Kina. Tony Kina. Yes. And uh, so a case of quinine water to the house as well as some beer. You know, when you're locked down a pandemic, those yeah. are two essentials, right? Yeah, when we were making deliveries all over, it was yeah. good. And then who the people were, that liked it the most were uh, hospital workers and uh, the, the police checkpoints. Yes, the transit so, officers. Yes, yeah. it was great. Uh, we were, we were we'd, during the pandemic and lockdown, we were able to go anywhere we wanted to go. No, no restriction. And we, we make our own whiskey as well. Now we distill beer that doesn't pass our own quality control. So the, all, all the heads off of the des desolation, we would use to sanitize the hands of the police officers at, at, at the uh, checkpoints because they had a police officer, military, a military, a, a doctor from a hospital, um, transito, and bomberos. They had a representative of each. Bomberos is the and, fire department. And we, we, um, we would, uh, they, they didn't, they didn't give them gloves or anything, you know, they were, and so we would drive by and have them line up and spray some alcohol on their hands and sometimes I'd drive by with a little bottle of whiskey and say you can sanitize inside as well yeah, so yeah. it was good it was great I know your fun. dad had me keep a couple of bottles of quinine and water in the car he said just in case you need to bribe your way through a chicken point <laughs> yes yeah, so that was cool well look I know everybody's excited they want to see this tour why don't we get started okay let's go let's okay. go all right Joe come on this way so to make beer, we need four main ingredients, which is uh, water, barley, yeast, and hops. Yeah, not so, to interrupt, but you mentioned the barley is from Ecuador. Yes. Um, so is that grown near the coast? Or? No, no, it's grown in, in the central highlands of Ecuador. Oh, okay. And so we are actually working on a project to uh, malt barley for other brewers. Oh, fantastic. And, but currently, we, we malt our own barley. Um, most brewers around the world will buy barley from large uh, malt trees. Here in Ecuador, by the time you get barley from, or malt from a large uh, malt tree, it'll take about between six weeks and six months before you're using that wow. grain. We like having fresh ingredients, so. It seemed like it'd lose some flavor if you did that. Oh, it, yes, it does lose flavor. Imagine drinking coffee that's been roasted six months ago, or coffee that was roasted last week. Yeah. So what we have here is, you can see we, we're soaking barley. This is uh, the first step. It's starting to sprout. It's starting to germinate. Really? And we, we will soak it for two days. After soaking for two days, we'll put it on the floor and stir it while it's on the floor and let it germinate. Now, the, why do we germinate barley is to have the enzymes or diastatic power to convert starches into sugars. So without germinating barley, we end up we end up with a just like a porridge. But if we germinate barley, and we go through with the beer making process, we extract sugars from the grain, and that's our objective. Yeah. So the sugars turn into alcohol. So after having it on the floor for five to six days, then it goes into our dryer and our roaster, and we prefer to roast within the same week of barley or no, beer production so we have the freshest flavors in that roast we don't roast the same day or the day, day prior because uh, when you roast barley same as roasting coffee you end up with um, these gases that need to degasify 
So you, we, 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 we try to roast like three days prior to making our beer. And like yesterday we made a, 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 a lager. Oh, we brewed a lager because making beer takes like a month and a half. And the whole process, uh, I think so, some people don't understand it. it the making beer is a long process. And that's why craft beer is a little bit more expensive than regular beer too because it's uh, labor intensive and it takes, uh, it takes six time. weeks before you're drinking it. So uh, let's go, our next step is, we'll come over here. What we do is the day we produce beer, we get those fresh malts, we grind the grain, bring it up through our grain elevator into our mash tun. And what happens in our mash tun, we have a, a stir, we have a kind of like a shower as well. And we heat up, that grain uh, up to uh, 70 degrees Celsius, which is like 160 something, 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And we activate the enzymes that we get in the grain during our um, germination. So we extract all those sugars and those sugars are the sugars of two molecules, which is maltose. That's why it's called malt. And um, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours in our mash tun, and then we bring it over to our boil kettle. And the reason we boil it uh, is one to, we want to uh, sterilize the wort, and that's where we add hops, which is our, our third ingredient for beer. And hops, if, if, if people have never heard of hops before or anything, hops is a flower that grows from a vine that the flour is bitter, it is a natural preservative, and it is a natural, um, it's, it relaxes you, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, that's why when you drink beer, you feel kind of like relaxed. And that's why IPAs are called English Pale Ales, and that's because, um, or India Pale India Ale. Pale. And that's because the beer they were sending from uh, Europe to the Indias, Americas as well, they call them the Indies. Um, they added more hops to it so the beer doesn't go bad. Because the first beer they started sending over, problem. yes, because the first beers they started sending over would spoil. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you do? You have a little higher alcohol content because alcohol is a preservative and you have more hops and hops is a good preservative. So, okay. and then let's go to our, our final step and not final step, but the next step in the production day. This is a, um, after boiling, we run it through a heat exchanger, and then we bring it over to our fermenters, where we add yeast to it. <clears throat> what, what, what does yeast do? It just, it's a microorganism that will convert all those sugars we extracted from the grain and turn them into alcohol and CO2. So what you can see here, we made a batch of beer yesterday, and it's already fermenting, and all the excess CO2 is purged it off, and then it gets to a certain point when we've reached our attenuation in fermentation, and then we just shut off the excess, and it starts gas, it preserves its own CO2. So we try to keep it as natural as possible. We add no clarifiers to our beer. Our water, that's the main ingredient in, in making beer besides uh, malt. Our water isn't treated with chlorine. Our water is potable from the source and it has all the minerals you need to make a good beer and uh, have a good diet, so. And so this is basically gassing off the excess CO2. Yes, it's gassing off the excess CO2. And, um, oh, another thing too is everything has to be sanitized. We have, this is the sanitizer we were talking about, the, uh, okay. that we would give the uh, uh, police checkpoints and stuff during the pandemic. But um, we use it to sanitize all of our equipment and we also, you know, we'll drink a little bit of whiskey to sanitize inside as well, but... Um, I like that sanitizer. It smells, smells good. like beer. It smells <laughs> good. Here, you want to smell it right there. Look. It smells delicious. Ooh, yeah. A little whiskey smell to it. Yes, yes. It's, it's basically whiskey. It just hasn't been aged. And th that's... The, no th those are the heads. wants to hang out with you. <laughs> so, um, then what we do is when we... Uh, finish the fermentation. Uh, if it's a lager, it takes six weeks. And if it's an ale, it'll be about two to two and a half weeks in our fermenter. We'll bring it over to our bright tank to 
uh, add any excess or CO2 that we might need. And it prepares a, uh, the, the beer to be bottled. So we bring it over to our uh, manual bottling. Um, we put our bottle in. It, we fill the bottle with CO2 first. And then we add beer from the bottom, fills up. Uh, excess foam will pour off the, the, the excess spout. And then we will cap it with our manual capper. So we cap right there. And we bring it, bring it over to pasteurize. So we do a light pasteurization because Ecuador doesn't have the uh, cold chain for beer. So it can heat up. Uh, let's say if I send beer to a Guayaquil, it'll heat up and it can spoil. So what we do is we just pasteurize it and we don't ha have to worry about having beer go bad on us. So the transport mm -hmm. trucks yes. here you're saying don't have cold yes. storage? Yes, but most of, most of our beer sold in Bilcabamba is on pasteurized. Mm. And so um, we, we pride ourselves on making sure that we have the most natural product without having any chemicals or any alterations to it. So. Fantastic. Yeah. And then let's go to our uh, walk-in. In 2012, my parents uh, had the opportunity to bring in a container of goods. And we purchased a equipment from a cold room in the States that they were tearing apart and breaking down. So we threw in the door. He said, like, wait, the deal was like, throw in the door. And this the door fit perfectly in our original door. Oh. And we painted it really nice and set it up. Yeah. So we'll go into our walk-in. Sounds great. After you, sir. Is we store our beer uh, in kegs for local restaurants. So we have beer at um, Charlito's, Eden, Carro Azul, La Terraza. I think those are pl the places we have our beer on draft. Oh. And then we have two places in Loja that sell our beer on draft. It's uh, uh, Marisqueria Puerto Callao, a Peruvian restaurant, has excellent food. And a, a coffee house is called Soul Coffee Roasters. It's up by the uh, Technical University of Loja. They have some really good coffees. Mm -hmm. And they have good beer too, so. <laughs> now, and then the other part is, uh, we keep our bottles cold as well. These are our unpasteurized bottles that are shipped off to just local bamba or local, local sales. And you can see here our tonic water and our tonic water label, Tonikina. And um, we have, we'll see the other bottles over by, by the table we were sitting on. And um, yeah, that's it. That's, a, that's our, our walk-in. So. Germinated barley or malt inside our walk-in to keep it fresh. Uh, you can see our next batch of beer is, is waiting right there, and the next batch to be malted is waiting right there. So we end up with the freshest products we can, we can get. Fantastic. So this is our CBD beer. Give it, give it a, a, the, the smell and taste to it, and you'll, you'll, you'll taste it right away. Oh, wow, so. yeah. Man, this is my favorite part. <laughs> All right, so cheers. cheers. There you go. That's nice. Oh, wow. Tastes, yeah, tastes delicious. Nice. So, so Santiago, nice. would you like to try some as well? Sure. We'll fill, fill this one up again. Yeah, I didn't drink all that. I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we got uh, an early start on, on trying it before we started filming. And, and so. this one is for our cameraman, Santiago. I really didn't drink two of them. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. For Santiago. So, Ivan, tell us what you've got in these bottles right here. Okay, so we, we have a lager. We have our blonde, red lager, our dark beer. It's kind of like a stout. We have our comet, which comes in uh, during special seasons. And we have our IPA. And there's all, a whole theme with our labels. So we have uh, the lightest beer. It has the first light. Uh, uh, the, you can see the sun rising. And then our blonde beer, which is refreshing for a hot day. And so we have, it's uh, like morning time, midday time. And then we have our lager, which is a sunset. And then we my, have- My favorite, yeah. We have our uh, Eclipse, which is like, you know, it's a darker beer. You, you typically want to drink it at night because it's thicker and it will warm you up. 
we have our Comet, which comes during uh, special seasons, and that's why we only make it with coffee or uh, cacao. And anything that we want to experiment with, we've ha we've had a, like um, a toronche beer, which is like a, the mini bibaco, mm. tastes delicious, but it's hard to come by, so we keep it simple. And then our IPA, and it has a flying saucer on it, and because they say here in Milkabamba, flying saucers will come on top of Mandango, which is a, a mountain here in the center of Milkabamba Valley, and they will charge with uh, the, their their flying saucer with uranium that's underneath Mandango. And so we, we decided to play with that a little bit. And um, we have, we're still waiting for the logo for our CBD beer. For the CBD and, yeah, beer. Yeah, working on that. This is so. awesome beer. <laughs> so um, Curtis and Yvonne, they have a website, they have a Facebook page. All their information is gonna be located in the description box right beneath this video. So I want you to reach out to Yvonne and Yvonne, can they get a tour with you if they come to Vilcabamba? Yes, uh, you can send, them a, send us a message or contact us and we will be more than glad to give you a tour. And uh, we will show, show you our facility. We'll, we'll have a sample beer and hopefully not in too much time, we'll have a beer garden steakhouse type of thing. Uh, we have a, a nice area set up for it and we still need to fix it, fix some things up and yeah. Um, oh, before I forget, we have, you know what Sol de Venado means. Let's, let's describe that because yeah. I think it's important for the viewer. Uh, Sol de Venado is uh, during sunset. Have you seen the mountains change color into these bright orange, bright yellow, uh, sometimes even pink colors? There's dark shadows. And that's when they say that they call it Sol de los Venados because that's when deer come out to drink water before nightfall. And the deer is in a moment of relaxation, it's in a magical moment, because a predator cannot see deer in that sun. So we decided to give our beer Sol de Venado name, because those, are, those bright oranges and dark shadows are colors of beer. And we would like to you, no, to, we would like you to trans, be transported to that Sol de Venado while you drink one of our beers. I so. definitely feel transported right now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Thumbs up till next time. Hope you'll watch and subscribe. <laughs>